The architect, Daniel Liebeskind, believes that buildings should tell stories. What does he mean by this? Well, Liebeskind has designed buildings for many purposes, including residential and commercial use, but I'm going to concentrate on his museums, as I believe these perhaps illustrate the idea of telling a story through a piece of architecture the best. Liebeskind is a Polish-American architect. He's also an artist, a professor, and a set designer. He founded studio Daniel Liebeskind in 1989 with his wife Nina, and is the company's principal design architect. You can see his work, and that of his design and architecture studio, on his website, and I would urge you to look at that in detail to see the diverse, ambitious and exciting designs that Liebeskind has created. Form versus function is a big debate in architecture, and I think it's particularly interesting to look at Liebeskind's work whilst considering this debate. Should the design of the building, or its functionality, be the priority? That's a huge question, and perhaps it's a mix of the two. I personally don't want a world where all cities look exactly the same. I believe that unique architecture gives character to a city. I love visiting a new city and seeing the skylines. I love looking at Manchester's skyline. I love it that there's distinct architecture in many of my favourite cities. Manchester has lots of distinct architecture. And we'll be looking at Daniel Liebeskind's work in Trafford at the Imperial War Museum later in this discussion. Famously, Liebeskind is known for the completion of the Jewish Museum in Berlin. That's the image you can see on the left here, next to the Imperial War Museum, which is the image on the right. We're going to look at the Jewish Museum in depth as well. Some other buildings that he's known for include these. So on the left we have the Denver Art Museum in the USA. We have the Grand Canal Theatre in Dublin at the top right. And we also have the Michael Lee Chin Crystal at the Royal Ontario Museum in Toronto in Canada. So this is the Jewish Museum in Berlin. It was opened in 2001 and is the largest Jewish museum in Europe. It consists of three buildings. Two of these are new additions specifically built for the museum by Lieberskind. German Jewish history is documented in the collections you find in this museum and the library and the archive. It's also reflected in the museum's programme of events. And the museum is one of Germany's most frequented museums. I think Liebeskind was particularly invested in this project as both his parents were actually Holocaust survivors. You can see from the view looking down at the museum on the left hand side that it's designed with a very distinctive shape. A line of voids of empty spaces that are around 66 feet high slice through the entire building. The voids represent in Liebeskind's own words, that which can never be exhibited when it comes to Jewish Berlin history, humanity reduced to ashes. On the right hand side you can see the old version of the building and then the newer sections which Liebeskind has designed. In the basement of the building, which you can get between the buildings using the basement, visitors encounter three intersecting slanting corridors named the axes. In Berlin, the three axes symbolise three paths of Jewish life in Germany. Continuity in German history, emigration from Germany and the Holocaust. The second axis connects the museum proper to the Garden of Exile. The Garden of Exile has 49 foot tall pillars which have olive plants growing out of the top. There's also a huge section called the Holocaust Tower. The bare concrete tower is neither heated nor cooled and the only light comes from a small slit at the top of the building. I've visited the Jewish Museum in Berlin and I would urge anyone who visits Berlin to go and see it. It's a fantastic piece of architecture but it's also one of the most sombering and thought provoking experiences you could ever have. I think anyone who goes down the narrow corridors in the, in the museum with the slanted floors or goes into the tower when the door slams in the tower, there's a huge echo. It's disorientating, it's sombering, it makes you really think, it puts you in a zone where you're ready to contemplate how serious and thought-provoking the content of the museum is. But also, very importantly, it pays respect to many, many people who are an important part of Berlin and Germany's history. And I think that's really important. The educational elements of the museum are also excellent. 
young people can visit from both Berlin and further afield and learn about the horrors of the past, but try and look forward and try and think how this can be prevented from ever happening again. That's an incredible experience and that is in clearly enhanced by the design of the building. The Imperial War Museum North is a museum in Trafford in Greater Manchester. Lieberskin said when designing this building he wanted to create a building which emotionally moved the soul of the visitor towards a sometimes unexpected realisation, which is a great aim for a building. The building actually represents a shattered globe. Liebeskind wanted the building to be a symbol of the effects of war, so he came up with the concept of a globe shattered into three pieces and then put back together. But even though it's been put back together, it will never be the same again. So the Imperial War Museum, as you can see from this image, has three main sections, the earth shard, the water shard, and the air shard. So the water one is next to the water, the earth one is the main body of the museum when you go inside, and the air shard is the tower, the tall section. And obviously, as the names would suggest, the earth shard represents conflict on land, the water shard, conflict in the sea, and the air shard, conflict in the air. When Lieberskin came up with the idea of the broken globe, he decided to drop a teapot, which was apparently the nearest object which was spherical in shape, out of his studio window. He used the broken pieces as inspiration for the Imperial War Museum North's three shards. Lieberskin wanted visitors to the museum to feel the unsettling nature of, of war, and he used a variety of techniques within the architecture to attempt to achieve this. The route into the museum itself is quite confusing, and the curves of the shattered globe that make up the outline of the building also continue inside the interior, affecting how you move around the museum. And here's a map of the museum, so you can see the different sections and how you would navigate around, and also an interesting insight into the design. I think one of the most important things about architecture and one of the most important skills an architect can have is the ability to realise how something fits into a three-dimensional space. And I find it fascinating looking at architects' drawings and seeing how they've managed to realise that. The floor of the main exhibition space, which you can see in the image on the right-hand side, it slopes by eight feet. So again, we have this disorientating feel when you're moving around the museum that is similar to what we see in the Jewish Museum in Berlin. There's no natural light and the temperature fluctuates as you go around. The features are intended to deliberately intensify the visitor's experience. The floor of the main exhibition sloping does disorientate you. It makes you look at the exhibitions in a slightly different way. It also mimics the curvature of the earth. The images on the left show the tower you can see the tower, there's a lift shaft that takes you to the top and you can see through the metalwork there are gaps so you're exposed to the elements, there is a, an element of the wind coming through. When you get to the top, which you can see in the top image, you can see a huge cityscape of Manchester. The floor, which you can see that person is standing on, has little holes in, it's like a grate. So you get a feeling of vertigo when you look down. I think with the wind coming through the gap and the feeling of vertigo which is gained by the grates in the floor, you get a, a strong experience. You feel uncomfortable but also it's thought provoking. I think the fact that Lieberskin has intended you to have an experience going around the museum certainly enhanced my experience of the museum. I found it thought provoking but also an experience in itself. I enjoyed the idea of experiencing a piece of architecture through the way it was designed. And for those reasons, as a visitor of both these museums, I'm a huge fan of Lieberskin's work. It has been criticised, and you will see in the images that I've presented today that there are consistent features to his work. Some critics have said that his work is all very similar. He has a particular caricature of the way architecture should look. However, I love the way it looks aesthetically, and my experience of the museums means that I'm a big advocate of his work and anywhere I go that there is a piece of Lieberskind architecture, I will always seek it out. So I look forward to hearing what you think of Lieberskind's architecture. It has these brutalist qualities. It is perhaps not for everyone, but for many, it's incredibly inspiring.